know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. If you are a student of corporate history in India, you are more likely to come across case studies of American companies rather than Indian. This is mostly because few large conglomerates in India have archived their own stories. And even if they have, it is not accessible to researchers. One of the few exceptions to this is the 120-year-old Godrej Group, which has set in place a rich archive. And the person driving it is historian Firoza Godrej, who is also a part of the founding family. So what made the Godrej's archive the rich past? The company is over 120 years old now. And uh, as we were approaching our centenary year in 1997, uh, the second generation of uh, Godrej in the business, namely Mr. Sorabji Godrej, who was the chairman of the company, uh, had this idea that we should have an archives of our company and its records. So well before the centenary year arrived, work was being made to collect all the documentation, whatever we could find of our company records and uh, bring it all under one roof under something called the Godrej Archives. Uh, we were very, very fortunate to have Sorabji with us and equally important and fortunate to have with us uh, the late uh, Mr. Barjor Karanjia who had already done a lot of collecting of this material and indeed published two volumes on the Godrej story. So there was a pretty good base to go on. And uh, why the archives? Well, we wanted to preserve what we had done because we were looking, at the, looking towards the past to see what we could do uh, for our future. So the buzzword at that time was not so popular as it is today something called innovation and you can only innovate if you know what your history was and where you want to go from there. The second thing is a company is made up of its people and a, and a company like Godrej which is an engineering company and which has a solid base of the workforce, blue collar, white collar. It was extremely important that we record the history of our people as well. So that was basically the genesis of why we wanted to do it. And business archives is not, I mean, you have historical archives, you have political archives, you have social archives, uh, but business archives is something quite, uh, it's a niche. I think we, we wanted to fulfill it for ourselves. The process of archiving is laborious. And what makes it even more challenging at a conglomerate like Godrej is that it is a rapidly expanding group of companies, ever-changing and growing. We have different processes. One is to get the records, so the collection, development. So whenever business no longer need any records, they can actually just call us, our team goes there, survey the records, whatever is the historically important records are then listed out and then they are transferred to the archives. Once they are transferred, then we have our basic cleaning uh, process and then the clean records are then forwarded uh, for the inspection and then the conservation team takes call and uh, if it is needed then it is sent to the conservation if it is not then it's uh, is sent to the storage facility and then the storage facility will look after uh, what kind of storage is needed to uh, different kinds of records and that's how the storage is managed we have the climate controls uh, and regularly the records are inspected uh, and then, of course, we have the cataloging unit, which uh, catalogs and creates metadata for each and every record so that they can be made accessible through our database. And then, of course, our major uh, challenge is to how to uh, map actually the current history of the company. And even like for the current records, we have our system in place that every month we um, write an email to our businesses and then they have to respond us and then of course there is a digitization process so that we can make it digitally available all the records in future to our users so digitization lab will plan the digitization of each and every uh, record that we have the godrej archives have a cross section of documents and objects and some of them are great historic gems when we were uh, exploring the collection that was there at Lalbagh factory, the old Lalbagh factory. 
uh, there in the tables and chairs of the old offices. And then we suddenly in one corner, we found one box, a steel box. And then we actually looked at it. Uh, we were like, uh, it was quite a eureka moment for us because it was the ballot box that Godrej made for uh, first elections of the independent India. And that was like amazing because we had seen the advertisement, we had seen two or three records about it. But seeing the actual ballot box was quite an amazing experience. And then we got two pieces over there, which we got it over here, we conserved it, and now it's part of our exhibition. Employees are quite interestingly using it even for the business purpose. So if, if they have to make an interesting presentation uh, as a marketing team to any of the customer, uh, they are actually using a lot of our documents which are reflecting on the Godrej's legacy. I would also like to narrate one incident when we had uh, actually done a very small pop-up exhibition in our conference room when we were really uh, still uh, establishing the archives. And one of the person actually was quite startled to see the hospital furniture ad in one of the 1950s paper, uh, newspaper. And he was like, he asked us that we were, were we manufacturing hospital furniture in 50s? And we said, yes, in 50s and 60s, we were manufacturing. And he had recently joined to again, uh, you know, because Godrej was again thinking of uh, entering the hospital furniture segment. And he was part of the marketing team. He said, can we use this ad? So at that time, we realized that, okay, it can also have a business value uh, when you're treasuring these kind of things at the archives. What started as an internal project for the company has ended up creating a much larger learning platform. I think one thing that we have done is we found that we were working, uh, I won't say selfishly, but we're trying to collect all our own material and put it in some sort of a uh, manageable form so that not only could we do our research but what we've discovered is there are so many other people around the world who are also doing research in business archives it could be something as advertising soap advertising you know even more specific furniture design what was the state of furniture design in India in the 1910s and in the 1920s did we have a furniture design concept NID hadn't started at, the, at that time either. Now they are there and they've had their archives for the last 60 years almost. So uh, these, are the, these are really the milestones that uh, appealed to us. But again, we were working in isolation, you know, everybody was working in isolation. And then we decided to go a little out into the public and venture and tell people what we were doing. And that's when uh, Sorabji had of course passed away by then. But Douglas Haynes used to come to visit us from the U.S. and he was doing the soap archives, soap uh, in uh, research. And we invited him to do a public lecture. And that's how the public lecture series started with uh, the Tata Central Archives, uh, Godrej Archives. Uh, Museum Society used to be involved at that stage. And now, of course, it's the CSMBS Museum that partners with us. The Godrej Archives, which started out as a small project to mark a milestone, has become a vibrant centre of learning. It has also opened up a whole new world of possibilities for researchers, who now have access to this rich material. We need many more such archives to tell the story of Indian business.